turn it around. Okay. Let's see if it's right. Okay, guys. I found the Costco. Thanks to two beautiful ladies. Okay, they're gone now. And um, well, here it is. This is the gate towards the Costco. Um, you can also cycle in here, but you're not allowed to take in any dogs. Well, there, ain't, there isn't any fee mentioned around here, so I guess I can just walk in. So let me just do that. Oh, by the way, there you have two lions again. And um, the lions refer to the fallen cherubim Apollyon and also to Alexander III of Macedonia. So, yes, it's a castle, so, you know, occult stuff was happening here in the past. But, just look. They've made other attractions also, though to capitalism, so you may understand. Ah, one beautiful piece of nature here. Wait, let me take a picture. Mm -hmm. Right, one, two, three. Good. You know, I, I believe I'm going in here now. Yes, let me do that. And let us three in here. Ah, there's a squirrel. Come on. Don't leave. Oh dear. I didn't catch it. I did catch it on film, I think, but I couldn't zoom in on it. Come on, where are you? Oh, those animals are quick. Well, let me just continue. See how it's became. Okay. And I'll be honest guys, I enjoy walking through such parks. It's just pure, it's just nature. Okay, I won't call it pure nature because there are human constructions around here. At least it's peaceful around here. And, well, just enjoy that. It's made by the Lord, nature, so you should enjoy and benefit from it and not exploit it as capitalism teaches. Picture of this tree here. Hmm, there's a building over there. Let me view, view it. Yes, here it is. The castle of Geldrop. This used to be a Roman Catholic castle during the 13th century, I believe it's in, in the year 1280, that some of those aristocrats built this castle to protect themselves and their wealth from their enemies. That often happened during the Middle Ages. It was a chaotic time in Europe. And this city was a settlement, though to this castle, you know, people came around 
they hang around, they built houses, they stayed, and the community culture up came into existence. It's the same with Schiedam. Many of the Dutch cities emerged like that. However, there are archaeological findings that should suggest that Geldrop was also an ancient Roman settlement, a military settlement that was destroyed and later rebuilt. But I'm not sure about that. Anyway, yes, Romans did pass by here. Maybe they built settlements dur dur during the 4th century, 5th century, but Geldrop itself, the present city, is arrived from the 13th century. I enjoy uh, talking about such stuff, it's history, and I believe it's important to know where you come from, because not only it may have an impact on your future, but, you know, history isn't there for nothing, you know, isn't there just... See, history is important. If also in the Bible the Lord, you know, spends time discussing history, and people should learn from the history of their ancestors. Well, I'm just going to walk further and see if I can see anything else around here. First, I need to take a picture, of course. Hmm. Okay. Let's continue. Oh, let me make a few more. Okay, let's go. Maybe not advice, but I'm carrying my you know, camcorder and my, um, you know, digital camera at the same hand. Well, wait, let me switch. Because I need to make some shots around here. Here. One, two, two. Okay. Nice plants. And um, guys, another thing. You see, I don't consider myself a preacher. Okay? You should know that. You see, I don't have an organized church. I'm not a pastor or anything. I'm just a born again believer, I'm saved. And I'm from ancient Hebrew descent, so I'm Hebrew and I'm saved. And I love the Lord Jesus with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so when I instantly, out of the nowhere, begin to share things about the Lord, just listen. Because I do it from my heart. I don't have any political or economic motives behind it because I'm not getting, you know, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm being blessed and taken care of by the Lord Jesus. And now, listen carefully. I wasn't planning to come here today, to be honest. I was planning to go to, what's the city again? Some other city in North, the Northern Holland, near Amsterdam. I wanted to visit a Facebook friend of mine that I've added a few days ago. It's almost a week now. So I wanted, I wanted her and her friends to see me. And there's also a carnival going on. I'm not going for the carnival, not just talk, I, I thought, let me just show myself that I'm real. But the Holy Spirit told me to go to Geldrop. Another Facebook friend of mine, this one I've met in real life a few times. She lives around here. Actually, she used to. She's studying in, in uh, Zwolle today. Which was formerly named Nabalia. She studies in Swalla, but she lives here. But the Holy Spirit told me to go here. So what did I do? I decided to go here. I mean, it should be logical. If the Lord says to do something, He's Lord. 
Lord. He's not a rabbi, he's not a pastor, he's not an advisor, he's not a president, he's not just a teacher, he is Lord. That means he ought to be obeyed. He knows what's best. And he's the Lord. So, when the Lord commands you to do something, just do it, okay? And you see, I don't regret, because not only did I found out that there's a castle around here, but also, I'm also able to make some beautiful, you know, pictures of nature here, and from the castle and soon from the city also. I would have missed all of these blessings if I didn't obey the Holy Spirit. Okay, you see, you will make plans in your life, you will make decisions, however you need to submit all of them to the Lord Jesus. And you should follow Him. He should be the Lord of your life. And one more thing, not everyone that's around you today belongs into your life. And I'll explain this a little bit. Some people, I'm not saying all people, but of course not, but there are some individuals in your life that shouldn't be in your life at all. Those are individuals that are, they are negative. You see, someone can carry negativity in them, that's a hurt or a negative past experience that is in, impacted them till this day, that's you carry something with you that you need to be uh, delivered from. See, that's someone who carries negativity with them. And you have people who are negative themselves. You see, there's a difference between someone who carries negativity, because everyone from time to time will carry some negativity in this world, because this world is purely wicked. It's only by the grace of God that things don't get out of hand completely. However, not everyone is purely negative, no. There are people who become negative because they resist the grace of God, to the extent that, you know, I don't say they are hopeless, but it's very difficult for them to, you know, that probably things won't, won't be, be well with them anymore. That also exists. So you have people who carry negativity, and you have people who are negative. And negative people should not be around in your life. Because I've been through this, guys. When I surrender myself, you have to surrender yourself to the Lord every day. When I, whenever I surrender myself to the Lord, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit, commands me to go somewhere to do something, I, will, I, will never, I won't share it with anyone else because the Lord spoke to me, not to them. But when I act in faith, it's those negative people around me that they don't resist in the sense that they come against what, what the Lord said to me because they don't know what the Lord said to me. That's why you shouldn't share any, everything with everyone. Some people should not receive your information. That should be clear. Um, but it's that they expect me to remain in a certain frame they've made for me. They've made a negative frame for me and they expect me to act according to that negative frame. There are people in my life who chose to make me a scapegoat. To blame me for everything that's going wrong in their lives. Who always expect me to do everything for them but they want any responsibility towards me. I've talked about this before in my video, How the Lord Saved Me. Well, the Lord delivered me from all those strongholds. However, those people, I'm also delivered from those people. They are still around, but they don't have that, that impact on me anymore. Because the Lord teached me to discern people and to keep people at a distance and to have no contact. And if no contact isn't possible, to have minimal contact with people who are negative. You see, you should never re accept a responsibility that the Lord didn't give to you. But you won't hear that in church, in most churches. However, the Lord makes clear in, in his book, you should never accept a responsibility that the Lord didn't entrust it to you. Because if the Lord didn't entrust that responsibility to you, then it comes from the devil. It's one of the, one of the ways. And there are people in your life who are parasites and partners of Satan. Whether they know it or not, they are his partners. With the aim, with Satan to destroy you. And 
Those people are also quite subtle, just as their master they are serving. Even if they claim to follow Christ, but they have a negative attitude, they are negative that they are following Satan. So, if you have such individuals in your life, obey the Holy Spirit, have no contact, or if no contact isn't possible, have minimum contact with them. Don't entrust yourself to them and don't share what the Lord told you with them. Because they are antichrist in attitude anyway, so it's not as if they would, you know, encourage you to do God's will. Anyway, be blessed. And um, I'll keep on filming and let's see what else I can photograph around here. I just needed to say this short message. I hope this blesses some of you. Hold on. This one part. This is another part. Oh dear. Oh, it's red. Well, I became inspired now to do another message, so I'll do that. You see, this pot comes from here, and there it separates into two pots. Well, hold on. Um, it ain't easy walking with two cameras, but I don't care. You see, Imagine that there is where the Lord Jesus stands that salvation and that's eternal death, hell. You see, that's basically, this is your birth, you're born, and you need to just take one of the two roads. You see, this road leads to everlasting life, this road leads to everlasting death, everlasting misery. You take one of the two as a human being. You either receive the Lord, the, you either receive the account of the Lord Jesus for you, and you live by it, or you'll you'll share in Satan's account. And you'll perish with him. It's one of the two. And by the way, what I've just just shown is just just a parable. I'm not going the way of eternal death. It's just I just used this area to illustrate a message. But I just needed to share that, you know. People often act as if, you know, they have a choice to, as if they have options. You see, you really don't have an option. You have the ability to choose. And that's why the Lord commands us to make the right choice, choice and He wants everyone to repent. It doesn't give humanity the choice to repent. It, it, didn't, it doesn't say, okay, if you want to have life, repent. No, it says, repent. It's beginning to rain now, but uh, I just keep walking anyway. I mean, seriously, guys, you know, that's why, you see, the gospel that people are hearing today often isn't the gospel at all, because the gospel is good news, and it implies a commandment, an order from the Most High for all men to repent and believe unto the finished work of His Son, Jesus. But as many people heard the gospel, they heard that they have a choice, that they have a right to choose whatever they want. That's not true. Despite the rain, still quite peaceful around here. Oh, need to make some pictures. Oh, it ain't open. To find a way to do this better. Hold on, guys.
Oh, Jesus. Oh, there's a farm over here. It's our rural area around here. Pollution. Capitalism. Yuck. This will come. This I will upload to my Facebook channels soon. Okay, let's continue. You see, I don't exclude the idea that maybe, you know, from time to time, witches and wizards attend this place to practice their hum their animal and human sacrifices. Maybe they do. See, they also love nature, but to do corrupt things with nature. However, the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof, despite the wickedness of men. I still didn't see another squ another squirrel around, around here or well, it's not a squirrel you know I don't know you see I'm not that good with you know biology with names of all those animals I'm more into anthropology and sociology and history I know about dinosaurs that I do oh Hold on. Um, I don't know what's around here, so let me check it out. One more thing that's...